Before we begin, I would like to share some points about today's meeting. Due to the coronavirus epidemic and the emergency stay at home orders, we are conducting this meeting virtually. The first known telephonic meeting in the board's 160 year history. Other than the mode of the meeting, everything else remains the same. If there is a disruption in the meeting causing us to terminate the video, instructions for re-establishing the meeting are posted on the website, which will also be immediately updated with instructions and information. Mr. Drotty, will you please call the roll? Yes. Madam Chair. Here. Mr. Dam. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Armenter. Here. Mr. Blossman. I believe Mr. Blossman is on the video, but not audio at the moment. Okay, Mr. Brazel. Here. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Okay. Shut up, Mr. Sadlane. Here. Ms. Jones. Mr. Mallet. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Perry. Here. Mr. Starnes. Here. <laughs> Mr. Woods. Here. Uh, Mr. Yarborough. Here. Okay. Madam Chair, you have quorum. Thank you, Mr. Drotty. Today's invocation will be given by Mr. Chatelaine. Okay, um, I would uh, let, let us pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to meet uh, and, and to discuss the business at, at hand. And Lord, there are so many prayer requests on our hearts. And this morning we lift up so many people. We lift up our governor, we lift up all of our leaders at our state level. We lift up all of our leaders at a federal level. We lift up our leadership at LSU and, and we uh, ask for wisdom and discernment uh, as they lead our, our university. We ask for our, uh, protection for our health care workers and those that are on the front line in this virus uh, and, and taking care of uh, those that are, are sick. Lord, we ask uh, for your blessings upon our faculty and our staff and we thank you for the great work that they're doing and uh, we ask that you would protect them and protect our students and, and watch over them as well. Lord, we lift up especially our friend Ronnie Anderson and his family, and we ask for continued healing and progress uh, for him and, and for strength uh, in the days uh, ahead. Uh, Lord, we ask as a board for continued guidance and give us uh, the, the wisdom and discernment that we need and the decisions to continue to move forward uh, during these difficult times. Help us, Lord, not to live a life of fear, but to live a life of faith, knowing uh, that better days indeed are ahead. Uh, we thank you for all that you've done for us, for all the people that are represented here. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 And today, the pledge will be led by Supervisor James Williams. I think James is not unmuted. No. Thank you for your patience, everyone. We're going to work this out. The chair will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United States of, America, of America and to the republic, to the republic for, for which it stands, it stands one, nation, one nation under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. 
we are in definitely uncharted territories and I thank you all for your patience and understanding. The staff here is working diligently to make sure everyone is connected. No one has registered for public comment today, so we will move on to the committee meetings. However, before we begin today's committee meetings, I would like to take a moment of personal privilege and express how relieved we are to have learned that our friend Ronnie Anderson has begun his recovery in fighting the coronavirus. As you just heard, Mr. Chatelaine, and you probably have heard the governor remark, Ronnie is a dear friend and a loyal servant to the state of Louisiana and to LSU. Ronnie has been on this board for more than 20 years, and he's been a good friend and colleague to all of us, and especially to the farmers and agricultural community of this state. We look forward to seeing Ronnie back here with us. Hopefully, we will all be present together at the May meeting. The duties of the academic committee chair will fall to the vice chair today, our student member, Ricky Brazel. Unless I hear objection, I move that we recess. Hearing no objection, the board is in recess. We will begin the committee meetings. Mr. Brazel, can you please call the academic committee meeting to order? Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Drotty, please call the roll. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Brazel. Here. Mr. Armenter. Here. And Mr. Chatelain. Here. Ms. Jones. Mr. Mallet. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Perry. Here. Mr. Yarborough. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Dr. Haney, would you please present the agenda items today? Yes, absolutely. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Um, let me just say it's fantastic to see each of you, even if it isn't a one by one inch square on my screen, and to know that the, the important critical work of the institution is continuing. And let me echo how, um, how uh, thrilled I am to uh, continue with this and thrilled I am with the leadership that um, President Galligan has brought to bear. We are indeed fortunate to have him at the helm and also to say uh, our thoughts continue with, with Ronnie and his family. Back to business, um, I'm excited today to uh, have a number of uh, programs uh, to put before the board. And the first is a request for LSU a and to establish the PhD in construction management. Um, the terminal degree uh, makes us competitive with over 40 programs in the nation and employers are increasingly asking for construction specific degrees. We currently offer uh, a concentration in construction management in our PhD in engineering science. Um, and it's a, our master's program certainly is nationally ranked in construction management, but many of the MS graduates who want to pursue the terminal degree uh, do not have that option here at LSU. And unfortunately, we potentially lose them to, to other programs. So this will allow us to uh, retain those students and recruit others. The engineering science PhD program currently has 32 students supervised by construction management. So there clearly is demand already. We project enrollment based on the Master of Science program uh, and the Engineering Science PhD program with those 32 students to have an additional five uh, each year after. There are no additional costs for the reconfiguration of this degree. Um, with uh, moving the specialization from the PhD in Engineering Science into a standalone PhD in Construction Management. And so I put that forward for the board's consideration. Thank you, Dr. Haney. I would like to call on Mr. Mallet to comment if he wishes. Mm -hmm. 
Hello. Oh. Um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Go oh. ahead. Anyway, it's it's a great day for LSU. Construction management is really uh, a great program. We have a lot of people in the industry that have really been pushing for this. But I do want to compliment the program for for working on it. Miss Stacy's done a good job, and I think hopefully she's working on some other projects for us. Absolutely. Okay. That's it. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. I think it's a, I think it's great we're doing that. We're really excited. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions from the board? If there is none, it, I, will, I will receive a motion to recommend the proposal as presented. This is Glenn Armentor. I so move. Mr. Armentor. Blake Shotland, I second. Mr. Shotland seconds. Is there any ob objection? Without objection, it is approved. Next item, please. Yes, so this is a request from LSU A&M to establish the graduate certificate in cloud computing. Certainly, as you are aware, more companies and organizations, government entities are running their storage and computing services using cloud computing. Machine learning is the science of how to train the computer to learn intelligent information from data and trend in, in industry such as Amazon and other web domains. Um, the Division of Computer Science and Engineering at LSU continues to get feedback from major IT companies, including IBM and DXC, to update the computer science curriculum in the areas of cloud computing, machine learning, and, and big data technologies. In the four graduate courses included in the proposed curriculum, 120 students were enrolled in academic year 18 and 19 alone. As this will be an online program, the projected enrollment will draw from this cohort as well as a national arena. Therefore, projected enrollment is five for the first year, increasing to 30 in year four. And there are no additional costs as the current computer science faculty will be able to manage the additional online enrollments. Thank you. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to recommend the proposal as presented? So moved. Ricky, Bobby Yarborough seconds. Mr. Yarborough seconds. All right. And who made the motion? James Moore. All right. Mr. Moore makes the motion. All right. Is there any objection? No. Without objection, it is approved. Next item, please. Yes, so the next is a request from LSU A&M for a letter of intent to approve a letter of intent for the Bachelor of Music Therapy. This program will prepare undergraduate students for eligibility to sit for the board certification exam to become clinical music therapists and clinical based researchers in music therapy. There's a dearth of music therapists in the Baton Rouge area and in Louisiana overall. There are currently only 75 board certified music therapists listed in the certified board for, um, for music therapists website as living in our state. The majority of these therapists are in New Orleans as Loyola is the only school in the state with this program. And there are currently only two music therapists uh, who are listed as uh, living here in Baton Rouge. The projected enrollment is 15 to 20 for the first few years, which is comparable to peer institutions with such programs. Employment outlook nationally and locally are strong. Growth for music therapist jobs over the next 10 years is faster than the national average at seven to 10 percent. Thank you. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to recommend the proposal as presented? Glenn on Shotland will make that motion. I can be second. All right, thank you. Mr. Shotland makes the motion. Mr. Armenter seconds. Is there any objection? Without objection, it is approved. Next item, please. Yes, the next is a request from LSU Health Sciences in New Orleans to establish a PhD in nursing. The, um, this would replace the Doctor of Nursing Science degree program with a Doctor of Philosophy or a PhD in Nursing. 
And moving this forward under the Regents, we, we are asking um, to, to be able to move this forward. It will be under the Regents' new pilot program that allows expedited review into full proposal. Um, and we have received approval from the Board of Regents staff to do this. The um, Health Science Center New Orleans Doctor of Nursing Science program um, was established in 1985 and it's one of the last nursing schools in the country which has not yet converted to the Doctor of Nursing Science and converted it to a PhD. The American Association of Colleges of Nursing indicated that schools of nursing should bifurcate their programs to offer two doctoral degrees, one devoted to practice which is the Doctor of Nursing Practice and the other to research the PhD. Since 2001, schools of nursing throughout the United States have passed uh, the uh, professional doctorate uh, degrees in lieu of the PhD. It's widely recognized for its emphasis on intellectual inquiry, scholarship and research. And while 33% of research focused doctoral programs in nursing in 1988 awarded the DNS, uh, only three of the 139 research-focused doctoral programs in nursing um, now have the DNS. And that, of course, includes the Health Science Center in New Orleans. So the impetus for the widespread conversion of the DNS to the PhD degree across the U.S. was fueled by the emergence and proliferation of Doctor of Nursing practice. And that degree has proliferated since 2005. And while the Doctor of Nursing practice uh, is a terminal degree, it maintains a practice focus as opposed to fundamental research focus of the PhD. And as such, the DMP prepares advanced practice nurses and nurse practitioners, anesthetists, midwives, and clinical nurse practices more broadly to have sev several specialty roles in clinical practices. So we put this forward for your approval. Thank you. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to recommend the proposal as presented? So moved. This is Valencia. All right. This Val Bobby seconds. All right. Ms. Jones makes a motion. Mr. Yarbo seconds. Is there any objection? Without objection, it is approved. Next item, please. Yes, the next item is a, a request from the LSU Health Sciences in Shreveport to establish the Doctor of Occupational Therapy. They received an extension for proposal until May 10 of 2020, an entry level degree for students possessing the BS and BA and the program specific prerequisite education. Students will be able to sit for the National Board Certification in Occupational Therapy exam and become a registered occupational ther therapist. Traditional on-site program the first cohort will start in May 2022. The profession of occupational therapists moving to the doctorate as entry level uh, for the field. Their accrediting body thus mandated this change in 2017. However, this was reversed in August of 2019 due to a lack of faculty with doctorate qualifications to teach in such programs. The Health Science Center in Shreveport hence would like to maintain this proposal to lessen the faculty shortage for these programs. 65% of the programs around the state have also decided to establish the OTD and thus this will become the entry level degree for the future. And Louisiana doesn't yet have one. Therefore, the students are likely enrolling in other institutions in Texas and Arkansas who've already made this transition. Um, ULM and Health Science Center New Orleans will remain at the master's level. And surveys to gauge interest were sent out twice to all Louisiana campuses. Projected enrollment is 78 students each year, capped to maintain integrity for classroom and lab space. Revenue will more than be adequate to cover the costs of the two new faculty members in the second year. We read this for your consideration. Thank you. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to recommend the proposal as presented? Ms. Jones makes it move. I'll second that. Blake Shotland. Mr. Shotland seconds. Is there any objection? Without objection, it is approved. At this time, I will accept a motion to conclude the academic committee. This is Glenn, so moved. 
Mr. Armature moves. Is there any objection? Without objection, the committee is adjourned. Madam Chair, the academic committee has concluded. Thank you, Mr. Brazel. Mr. Chatelaine, would you please convene the finance committee? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Drotty, would you please call the roll? Yes. Mr. Chatelaine. Yes, here. Mr. Blossman. Mr. Brazel. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Damp. Ms. Jones. Here. Mr. Mallet. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Perry. Here. Mr. Yarbrough. Here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Okay, thank you. We, we have three items on the finance committee. They all deal with, uh, with, with some scholarship issues and I'm gonna ask Dan Lazell to present those. If it's okay, what we'll do is, is Dan will present each one, I'll pause to see if there's any questions. And if not, we'll go through all three of them and just take a, a vote on all three items uh, at the end. Okay, so. Uh, Dan, if you, if you don't mind uh, starting out with the request uh, from LSUE for Miss LSU, uh, LSU Eunice Patrick. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Adeline, uh, members of the board. Uh, it's good to see everybody uh, virtually, and uh, personally, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, work on my necktie tying uh, skills again for, uh, for the first time in many days. Uh, the first item is a request from LSU Eunice to establish four scholarships for the uh, Miss LSUE pageant winners. Um, LSUE is seeking approval of the establishment of these scholarships totaling $700 to be awarded to student pageant contestant winners from the SGA restricted fee account. Uh, the, there again will be four uh, scholarships awarded uh, out of this total each year. Uh, the winner of the pageant will receive a $500 scholarship. The first runner-up will receive a $100 scholarship. Uh, Miss Congeniality will, will receive a $50 scholarship and the Academic Excellence Award winner will, will receive a $50 scholarship. Uh, the SGA restricted account generates approximately $25,000 annually from student fees uh, the, again, the, the establishment of these awards would total about $700, leaving SGA with just a little over $24,000 every year to support its operations. And currently, SGA is not fully utilizing the funds available that are generated each year. Uh, so there would uh, certainly be uh, sufficient funding remaining to, uh, to address these operations. Uh, before we uh, move on, I'd like to see if Chancellor Sorensen has any comments she would like to make. All right. Uh, well, with that, I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, any questions on that one? Hearing none, Dan, why don't you move on to the next one, which is uh, for the Bingle Ambassador Program. And oh, Blake, Blake, before you move yes. on, this is Steve Perry, before you move on, were you asking for action on that item? No, if it's okay, unless there's questions, or uh, then I would say let's, let's go through all three of them and we'll take one vote on all unless anybody objects. I, I, I just really hate to do this, but I mildly object to that one. Um, we're entering some very difficult financial times and I'm not sure that that particular, um, that particular recommendation would be where I would go on student financial assistance for the university. But other than that, I won't have any other comments. Do you, would you, Stephen, would you prefer if we take an individual vote on, on each item? Blake, that's totally up to you. Like I said, it's just a mild objection. I'm not sure that that would be my top priority in this, in this time. So. Okay. Well, I will just, but, ask. I, but I don't want to vote in favor of that particular one. That's all. Okay. And that's no offense to the pageant system or to the students who participate in that. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure that that's uh, the priority right now. Sure. I understand. 
Well, well, with that, why don't we take each item individually? So I would ask if there's any other questions or if there's a motion uh, on this item. Does any, anybody, does anybody, everybody feel like Stephen or is, is anybody care to make a motion to advance this? So moved. And this is Glenn, I'll, I'll second it. We have a motion and a, and a second, uh, motion from Mr. Brazel, a second from Mr. Armentor, all in favor. Do, well, do I need to- I'm sorry, Mr. Call? Chair. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Jason. Uh, Mr. Armentor is not on the committee. We'll need a second from someone else. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry. This is Wayne, I'll second it. Can I be heard? Right. And Jason, do I need to remind me, do I need to do an individual roll call vote? No, sir, only if there was an objection, only if there's an objection to um, adopting the, the motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? There is an objection. And, if, and, and any opposed, which we would know. Um, yes. Mr. Perry just, has stated an just, objection, Mr. Chair. Just, just note that I would vote against and the rest will be good. Okay. I'm sorry, any so Mr. Since there's an objection, Mr. Chair, we have to do a roll call vote uh, for the committee on this item. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Chair, um, yay is for the motion, nay is against the item. Uh, yes. Mr. Chatlam. Yay. Mr. Blossman. Mr. Brazel. Yay. Mr. Br Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Damp. Ms. Jones. Yay. Mr. Mallet. Mr. Moore. Yay. Mr. Perry. No. Mr. Yarbrough. Yay. A vote of six to one, the motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, all right, we'll move on to the next, which is uh, again the Bingle Ambassador Program. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lazell, if you'd pick that up. Sure. Uh, LSUE is seeking appro approval of the establishment of eight scholarships uh, to selected student leaders who serve as Bingle Ambassadors. Uh, the Bingle Ambassador Program is a component of LSUE's chapter of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Uh, because the program account is structured to support Phi Theta Cap operations, uh, LSUE is requesting to utilize these funds to award scholarships to Bengal ambassadors uh, who are members of Phi Theta Kappa and who successfully complete their orientation duties over the summer. Uh, student leaders are required are recruited to apply to this program throughout January and after a highly competitive selection process the top eight applicants are offer, offered positions to serve as Bengal ambassadors. Currently, these positions are volunteer positions with no financial compensation. And as a result, it's difficult to recruit and retain these students in these positions as the duties, uh, the orientation duties fall over the summer. If approved, the program will, will award six scholarships in the amount of $300 each and two scholarships in the amount of $1,000 each for a total of $3,800 annually. Scholarships will be awarded in August of each year following the completion of their duties as ambassadors. The, the two $1,000 scholarships will be awarded based on performance evaluations asso associated with uh, their ambassador duties uh, while serving as, as uh, the ambassadors at new student orientations. The uh, Phi Theta Kappa Fund generates approximately 25,000 annually from student fees. Uh, the establishment of these eight scholarships, again, is 3,800 uh, annually, leaving Phi Theta Kappa with a little over 21,000 to support its other operations, which uh, will be uh, more than sufficient uh, to, uh, to meet their obligations. Uh, again, I'd stop there and see if Chancellor Sorensen has any comments she would like to make. Uh, given that, I would uh, be happy to answer any questions and uh, would ask for your favorable consideration. Any, any questions? Chancellor, I, I see 
were you trying to say something? I've well, I'm not, I, I, I have not been on the meeting because I've been negotiating medical appointments with my father. So uh, I, I'm not sure what the issue is that's being discussed. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I just, it looked like you were, it looked like your box was lighting up. So I thought you were trying to say something. We okay. And had just presented the, uh, the Bingle Ambassador Scholarship Program. Okay. Now, I did have one of our administrators text me that there was a concern about the, um, Miss LSUE proposal for a scholarship? We, we, we just present that and pass that. We had one, one objection to it. Uh, Mr. Perry had some concern. Okay. Well, if there's, if there's anything I can answer, I would be happy to answer that. All good on that. Okay, thank you. So uh, we, we will go ahead and, and take these individually. So I, I would ask uh, if there's a motion to approve this, this program. So moved. Name. Why second? I, I didn't catch the, the, the motion. Who made the motion? Second. You got that, Jason? No, sir, I don't. Okay. Oh, James, Moore. James, James Moore made the motion. Mr. Brown seconded it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. All right. Any objection? Okay, then that motion is, is approved. Uh, Dan, uh, the next Thank has you. to do with uh, some, some changes to how we administer our scholarship program uh, and giving some authority and flexibility to our interim president during these times, if you would cover that for us. Sure. Uh, the Board of Supervisors, as you're aware, approves the scholarship policies of the various LSU campuses. Uh, these scholarship policies seek to provide financial assistance to those with financial need, enhance campus recruiting and retention efforts, and help to design a class that contributes to the overall learning environment uh, for each campus. Uh, the current pandemic has uh, literally upended traditional recruitment and retention models, leading all of our campuses to move to remote learning for the balance of the spring 2020 semester and to extend that model through spring intercession and summer school. They're also evaluating, each of them are evaluating the longer term impacts of the pandemic on enrollment in the fall 2020 semester and what that might mean. The proposal before the board allows the president and the chancellors the ability to make local determinations about which financial aid policies can best maintain enrollment through the uh, pandemic in the aftermath uh, of the event. As this pandemic is causing uh, significant economic uncertainty among current students and prospective students and their families, all LSU campuses need broad latitude to make uh, decisions that mitigate the potentially negative implications for student enrollment and retention. The proposals uh, when submitted would allow the president to make determinations about proposed changes in student aid policies at LSUA, LSUE, LSUS, and the two health science centers as deemed necessary for the 2020 semester, intercession, and fall semesters. In March 2019, as you may remember, LSU a and was granted a similar authority to make such adjustments and we will, uh, this campus in fact, will be granting a 15% exemption credit to all students enrolling in the 2020 spring intercession, summer terms and summer intercession terms. Uh, I would be uh, happy to answer any questions uh, at this time and uh, seek your favorable consideration of this request. And again, I just, it's important to note, this is not a permanent change. This is just a temporary change for the summer, the intercession and the fall semester due to uh, the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Correct. Questions? So moved, James Moore. Bobby Yarborough, second. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. Is there any opposition? Hearing none, uh, unanimously that item is approved and unless there's any other matters that we need to discuss, I would entertain a, or I would ask if there's any objection to, uh, can, uh, uh, to uh, wrapping up the finance committee and moving on. Any objection? Madam Chair, uh, that com completes the work of the finance committee. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chatelaine. We're going to uh, take just a moment. We've got a, had a couple of microphones not working, so I'm going to ask Mr. Williams if, um, if he can let me know if he can hear me, and I'll see if I can hear him. Can you all, can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Can you all see me? Yes. Yes. Sir. You can hear me now? Yes. So Mary asked me to do the pledge. I brought up my brother's flag that was flown mission in Afghanistan for the pledge. So I'm sorry that we couldn't, y'all couldn't hear me, but I'm glad to be in the meeting now. Mr. Williams, I'm giving you a rain check for the <laughs> next meeting. Well, I'm just not going to be here. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Good to see you too. Mr. Woods, would you at this time please convene the Property and Facilities Committee? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Mr. Drowdy, please call the roll. Yes, sir. Mr. Woods. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Chatelaine. Here. Mr. Brazel. Here. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Here. Okay. Here. Mr. Mallet. Mr. Here. Moore. Oh, Mr. Here. Mallet. Mr. Moore. Here. Okay. Mr. Starnes. Here. Mr. Williams. Here, thankfully. <laughs> and Mr. Yarborough. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you very much, Mr. Gladi. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Tony Lombardo to present the items we have on the agenda today. Thank you, Mr. Woods, members of the board. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 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 Is a request from LSU Health Sciences Center in New Orleans to approve a lease of property for agriculture production in Vermilion Parish. Four parcels of land totaling 114 acres located in Vermilion Parish were donated to LSU Health Sciences Center, New Orleans. 70 acres of this donated land are farmable. LSU Health Sciences Center is requesting the board's approval to lease the 70 acres for sugarcane production. The proposed lease will have an initial term of five years with an option to renew for a subsequent five years. LSU Health Sciences will advertise the property, go through a public bidding process, and lease to the highest qualified bidder pursuant to the lease of public lands statute. I'll now defer to Dr. Oye for comment if he has any. Thank you. Uh, we would like to lease the land. There, there is uh, no other revenue coming to that land for us. And so it would uh, otherwise sit fallow. Um, Senator Lane is the one who had brought it to our attention that there are farmers in the area who would like to lease the land for sugarcane farming and uh, we'd like to put it up for a um, potential lease. Are there any other questions? I move that we approve um, the request to lease the uh, <clears throat> land in Vermilion Parish. It's been moved by Mr. Storms. It's I'll second. second, Bobby. Second by Mr. Yarbrough. Any, any objections? Uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to just make a comment as Wayne Brown. I understand that uh, Bill Richardson in College of Agriculture uh, worked with Dr. Ole and his staff to uh, develop the um, lease agreements and so forth. So I just want to compliment them for working together uh, at different campuses to, to the good of LSU. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Are there any other comments? Okay, without objection, the motion is approved. Uh, the next item, Mr. Lombardo. Thank you very much. Thank you. The second item is a request from LSU A&M to consent to financing by LSU Research Foundation. The LSU Research Foundation owns and operates the Louisiana Emerging Technology Center located on the LSU campus. LSU RF leases out space in the LATC building to both LSU and several private entities whose work is closely associated with LSU's mission. 
The Research Foundation intends to borrow not more than $4 million for a term of 10 years at 3.5% interest rate from Campus Federal Credit Union to finance construction of tenant improvements and to refinance prior loans for other capital costs. Uh, this, uh, this refinancing will save LSU RF $2 million over the, the term. The loan debt will be solely the responsibility of LSU RF. LSU is not a party to the loan and will have no legal liability for the debt. Thank you, Mr. Lombardo. Are there any questions on the item? Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to um, accuse myself in consideration of this item. Duly noted, Mr. Storns. This is Blake Shotland. I would make a motion to approve. It's been moved by Mr. Shotland. Is there a second? Wayne Brown, I second. Second by Mr. Brown. The motion carrier is presented. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, we had a very short agenda in this committee today, and I certainly want to, before I sign off, as a New Orleanian, thank the LSU family for uh, its response to the COVID-19 virus. Uh, here in New Orleans, as you know, we're in ground zero as it relates to the state of Louisiana. And I think the LSU family from one end of the state to the other actually stood up as you would expect from a flagship and uh, represented uh, this institution uh, admirably. Uh, I don't want to start calling names because I'll miss somebody. But uh, just from one end to the other, it was just an outstanding response. And I want to thank the leadership uh, of the institution, uh, Tom, your entire organization. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it. And I know I'm speaking for my other uh, New Orleanians as well, Mr. Williams, Mr. Perry, and uh, the others. So uh, just I want to say once again, thank you for the effort that was provided uh, by this organization. Madam, mm -hmm. that concludes uh, business of the committee. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Woods, and I echo your comments, as I'm sure your colleagues from New Orleans do as well. We're glad to see New Orleans um, flattening the curve and, and we're all working together to see that we can take care of our brothers and sisters across the state and especially in New Orleans and Ground Zero. Ms. Jones, at this time, would you please convene the Athletics Committee? Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Drotty, please call roll. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Jones. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Armenter. Here. Mr. Bossman. Mr. Bossman. Okay. Mr. Brazel. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Damp. Here. Mr. Starnes. Here. Mr. Woods. Here. Madam Chair, you, you do have a quorum, and I know that Mr. Blossman can hear us. He is, we're having some audio difficulties right now, but he can hear us. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Drotty. We have a few, we have several coaches contracts before us this morning for our consideration. And I ask that Scott Woodward, please present the items one through three for the athletics committee. Well, well we can Madam start with Chair. item number Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, I'm going to be brief, but I uh, want to call out and, and thank the uh, Winston DeQueer and his crew for really uh, getting our uh, 11 contracts that we have in front of you restructured uh, in an effort to really uh, make the language very uniform uh, within CAA and with Title IX requir requirements, as well as uh, operation uniformity. and. Um, we have the changes that are negotiated separately in, in the schedule now so that the, 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 the main contracts, the beef of the contracts are, are uniform in that, that, that thing. So thank you, Winston and, and Trey uh, for doing that. Uh, 
obviously uh, we've discussed these uh, pre coronavirus and uh, and they are now ready in, in solid form signed and uh, and ready for your approval. The first one is uh, Coach Ogeron's, which I had discussed at the last meeting that uh, we think is uh, a, a very good contract, both for the university and for Coach Ogeron. And, uh, and, and it, it, I hope it, uh, it, it is a representation of what's to come, not as what has come, but what is gonna come and uh, more success. And um, I, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, just so you know, real quickly, uh, this will make him the third highest paid in the SEC um, and uh, fifth highest paid in the country. And, and I think it's well-deserved. And I, I think it was a well-negotiated uh, contract, Madam Chair. So with that, I'll answer uh, any and all questions. Madam Chair, well, are you entertaining a motion to approve? I am. I so Thank you, Mr. Stone. I so second. I'll second. All right, great. We all second. And second by Mr. Dan. Is there any objection? Without objection, the motion is approved. Okay, Scott, can we move on to the second request, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, our second is uh, for Coach Ensminger in the uh, position of offensive mm -hmm. coordinator. Uh, we want to make uh, Coach Ensminger and reward him uh, uh, for being uh, uh, such a, a good coach and an LSU man for so long and, uh, and, and really get him competitive. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, he will be tied for fifth uh, for offensive coordinators uh, in the SEC, and, um, and we think it's a, it's a fair compensation. We're taking him up from uh, $800,000 to a $1 million and, uh, uh, as well. And uh, I just uh, wanted to let you know that we are pleased with the job he's done and how he's represented LSU. And here again, this is commensurate with uh, my comments on uh, Coach Ogeron and the whole staff. So with that, I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Any questions? Is there a motion to rec recommend the proposal as presented? So moved. So moved. Okay, moved by Mr. Arminter and seconded Wayne by Wayne Mr. Brown. Damp. Okay, Jason, you, did you get that? Yes, ma'am. Motion by Mr. Arminter, second by Mr. Damp. Okay, is there any objection? Okay, without objection, it's approved. Um, the next item, please, Mr. Woodward. Yes, the... Uh, the uh, last item is uh, our defensive coordinator, Coach uh, Bo Pellini. Um, we were, Coach Ogeron, uh, again, uh, asked me that we get the best uh, that we can get, uh, as always. And uh, he went out and did that with, with uh, Coach Pellini. And I think it's working out tremendously. Uh, Coach uh, Pellini will, uh, just so you know, give you a reference, will be the second highest paid uh, in the uh, SEC behind Coach Steele at Auburn. And, uh, and so I, I think that uh, there's no better uh, defensive coordinator uh, in football, and he's proven it not only uh, uh, in his body of work, but more importantly here at LSU when he was here and, uh, and, and shared uh, in, in a national championship. So we, we hope uh, for good things to come, and uh, we're getting great feedback. So, again, um, I am open to any <coughs> questions and uh, happy to answer them. Thank you, Scott. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to recommend the proposal? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Damp, seconded by Mr. Starnes. Is there any objection? Without objection, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Woodward. Thank you. And one more, Madam Chair, uh, you know, with the other ones in the, in the later agenda, I just wanted to give everyone a reference for the other contracts. Um, our, our SEC assistant coaches pool, which is, uh, has, hasn't been finished by other schools, but uh, if we approve all the, uh, all the contracts, uh, we will be second uh, behind Alabama in the coaches pool. And, uh, and we will be in the country, I think, fifth. Uh, as far as uh, uh, national coaches pools. 
So uh, with that, uh, when that time comes, and if there are any questions, I'm happy to do that, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Woodward. Appreciate you. Have a good day. Okay. Um, are there any questions for Scott about that at this time? Okay. So at this time, I'll ask Chancellor Clark to discuss um, item number four, to present item number four. Chancellor Clark, are you with us? Okay, well, item number four is a request for from LSU Shreveport to approve a contract for women's soccer coach, Justin Mullen. Does anybody have any questions regarding this request? Is there a motion to recommend? So move. I move to approve, Madam Chair. Can I second? Okay. Moved by Mr. Starn, seconded by Mr. Brown. Is there any objection? Without objection, the motion is approved. That concludes our business for today. I'll accept a motion to conclude the committee. So moved. A second. Moved by Mr. Armenter, seconded by Mr. Brown. Thank you all very much. Is there any objection? Without objection, the committee is adjourned. Madam Chair, the committee has concluded. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you, everyone, and uh, Mr. Woodward for joining us today. We appreciate everybody's patience and participation. At this time, we will reconvene the board meeting. Mr. Drotty, will you please call the roll? Madam Chair. Here. Mr. Damp. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Armentor. Here. Mr. Bossman. Mr. Brazel. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Chatelaine. Here. Ms. Jones. Here. Mr. Mallet. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Perry. Here. Mr. Starnes. Here. Mr. Woods. Here. Mr. Yarborough. Here. All right, Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Mr. Bossman has confirmed he can view. We just are continuing to have audio problems. Thank you. We will now move to personnel actions requiring board approval. Included in the personnel actions are a number of football coaches contracts, most of whom had term, sheet, term sheets approved previously. Is there a motion to adopt the personnel actions? I so move, Madam Chair, to adopt them all in Globo. A second. Glenn Armentor, I second. Thank you. Are there any objections? Without objection, the actions are approved. Due to our format for this meeting, the Council of Faculty Advisors and Council of Staff Advisors provided their reports in writing. I'm going to give a brief summary and those have been provided to the board. In summary, the staff advisors reported that the staffs across all campuses have continued to perform their duties, both virtually and where required in person. They are supporting the faculty's move to place courses online, and they are participating in COVID-related activities, such as the collection or making of PPE, personal protective equipment. The faculty advisors reported general satisfaction in the collaborative work between faculty and administrators to move instruction to a virtual environment. Points were made about faculty paying out of pocket for some expenses to work online. The faculty are concerned about the fiscal prospects of the state and potential reductions in academics. From a work perspective, the faculty shared their concern about lost research and funding to to reestablish what has been lost. The faculty are also inquiring about the safety procedures for laboratory work and the losses. If you have any questions for either of these councils, we will, I'll ask you to submit those after the meeting and we will report answers at the next meeting. Is there any objection to that procedure? I want to thank our faculty and staff advisors for being understanding and willing to participate 
um, understanding that we are all working in a new environment and for being amenable to this process. I am deeply grateful for all the work that they have put in in person, the essential personnel at the A&M campus and at every campus, the doctors, nurses, the cleaning teams, everyone, and those who are still caring for students who have not been able to return to their homes due to coronavirus restrictions. They are feeding our students, they are taking care of their safety and security and their health needs. And I want to let all of them know this goes, um, this does not go unnoticed. And we are very grateful that this Tiger Nation has all pulled together for the safety and protection and the education of all our students. At this time, I'll ask President, Inter Interim President Galligan to present his report. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, let me begin uh, my report in Alexandria. Last night, uh, Central Louisiana was hit with uh, tornadoes and um, LSUA suffered some damage. Um, Chancellor Carell says the damage is not serious, but they have lost power and they have lost water. So the 40 students who remain on campus are going to are going to be moved to the Hotel Bentley, um, where, they will, where they will stay until they can return to campus. Um, and you you all will remember that the Hotel Bentley was where we had our January 6th board meeting. Um, and I don't think Paul is on the uh, meeting right now. Paul, he are you No, he texted me that he was signing off to go yeah. help move. I know he was going to try to come back. Um, our uh, Ag Center suffered uh, more serious damage. Uh, the DeWitt Livestock Facility, the research facilities, some other buildings, greenhouses and equipment were damaged. The, the people that live there uh, were evacuated. Thankfully, everyone is safe, um, but I think the physical damage is serious. Uh, Bill Richardson, do you want to add anything? Yes, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, we did have some uh, very uh, severe damage. The tornado came right through the heart of our research facility. We lost the DeWitt livestock facility and then went right down the road and, and basically destroyed all of our buildings where we had this equipment supplies. Fortunately, nobody was injured and we do have to replace some, some uh, families who lived on the station. Um, but um, our crews up there now are getting great help with uh, risk management and others are trying to get uh, some emergency repairs made. Uh, we'll be without power for a while we're working on generators, but uh, our people uh, are working hard on it, getting it done. So very, very pleased that nobody was hurt and we'll, we'll move forward. Great. We appreciate it. Um, and I, I promise I will be brief, but I would not be doing my job as interim president if I didn't take a few minutes to talk about the incredible accomplishments of, of our faculty, our staff, our students, our researchers, uh, and our academic leadership over the, over the past month uh, plus. And, and I thought the, the, the tack I would take with this is I thought back as to how many things have happened in the last month uh, plus. And so what I would like to do is take a few minutes and go back to the last time that, that most of us were physically together, which was March 6th. Um, our last board meeting uh, and, and to do a recap since March 6th and I will not be able to mention all the wonderful accomplishments of everyone, um, but life has been happening quickly and, um, and furiously. Uh, the very day we met, the chancellors uh, and I had breakfast together and we committed to do weekly calls, which was gonna be an innovation for us. Uh, we later upped those calls to twice a week, uh, and we are working together, I think, like we have never worked together before, and I thank them for that. The next day, we, we thought, you know, we may have to go to remote learning, so we issued a memo to faculty to provide them with online resources just in case we had to do that. The following Monday, uh, we began to make initial preparations for all potential impacts at LSU. It wasn't till that Monday, March 9th, that the first confirmed case was reported in Louisiana. On that same day, we listed a comprehensive website with corona information for faculty, staff, and students. Uh, by March 11th, there were 13 confirmed cases in the state. None of them were in Baton Rouge, 
and there were about 1,250 cases in the United States. That day, our LSU leadership convened to discuss the reality of remote learning. At 5.30, the governor declared a public health emergency. Now, at about that time, many of us were gathering to honor uh, F. King Alexander and to celebrate his leadership as president. It was a great event, but for me, it was cut short because I went out to the parking lot to get on a conference call of SEC presidents and to discuss the men's and women's basketball tournaments. We decided at that meeting uh, that evening that those games would be played without fans. The next day, uh, the same group of people back on the phone decided to cancel that tournament. Later that day, March Madness was called off. Uh, the NBA shut down. Uh, the NHL shut down. Sports and entertainment was basically canceled. Things were now moving very, very quickly. On March 12th, we announced that we would go to remote learning beginning March 30th. The governor announced the closure of all public K through 12 schools the following day, and the next day, the 13th, President Trump declared a national emergency. We canceled all on-campus events that day of 30 or more people through the end of May, and by the way, that was two days before the CDC would recommend limiting gatherings to 50 or fewer people. On March 13th, that same day, we started moving as many students as possible off our Baton Rouge campuses and our other campuses followed suit. Again, things were happening at lightning speed and we couldn't have done any of this without the incredible dedication of our faculty and our staff. On March 16th, we finalized our business continuity plans in case we had to work remotely and literally at five o'clock that day, we implemented them. On March 20th, the crisis hit home at LSU as we had our first confirmed case. To put it lightly, closing our campuses and transitioning um, in just a few weeks was a monumental task. Students, faculty, staff, IT professionals, and others were working around the clock to make it happen. On the 24th, we postponed commencement. And I say postpone because I promise you, we will celebrate our graduates when it is safe to do so. And safety has been our number one guide throughout our planning. Now we were into remote learning, we were into remote working, and our attention turned to fighting corona. Of course, by this point, our health science centers were literally at the front of the battle treating patients. At the same time, we knew there weren't enough tests in the state, and two of our LSU researchers, who had recognized the potential threat of the virus, were opening the River Road Testing Lab at LSU School of Veterinary Medicine, and they put it to work over the course of a week. Uh, by March 24th, the lab was returning test results within 24 hours. On the 25th, LSU Health Science Center in Shreveport uh, began testing. They are now able to conduct 1,500 tests a day and return results in 24 hours. On the 30th, our students did begin online learning and there were no major issues. Meanwhile, the Health Science Center in Shreveport was increasing its ICU capacity by 60%. The following day, we began COVID testing uh, at LSU Health Sciences Center in New Orleans. On April 1st, we announced summer courses and intercession would also be taught remotely and faculty turned to doing exactly that and getting ready for it. The next day, LSU Health Science in New Orleans started a clinical trial involving hydro hydroxychloroquine. Later, they added a clinical trial with hydroxychloroquine and z -Pax. Just days later, the Health Science Center in Shreveport became one of the first hospitals in the country to offer inhaled nitric oxide to COVID patients as part of a clinical trial and became the first in the state to test the plasma treatment for the virus. On April 4th, we signed off on a plan um, to <clears throat> turn the PMAC Center into our new manufacturing division, uh, making gowns and masks. Uh, but by the time the governor held his press conference at the PMAC last Friday, we had produced over a thousand gowns and over a hundred uh, masks a day. Uh, operations, we actually ran out of supplies. We were doing so well. Operations continue. Yesterday, we made 800 gowns. Today, uh, we expect we will make over 1,000 gowns. Outside of the PMAC, 
uh, LSU experts are designing UV sterilization cabinets. We call them the Sanitiger. A chemistry prof professor and students are making hand sanitizer um, that's being used in, in corrections, law enforcement, and other areas, including across campus. Manship has developed a website to help identify misleading and incorrect information about the virus. The College of Music and Dramatic Arts is doing virtual performance. The Ag Center, literally everywhere in the state, and Bill mentioned it before we, we began, in all 64 parishes, working with farmers, working with industry, working with the crawfish industry, and providing virtual 4-H every day to thousands of students who cannot meet in person so that they have something to do. Pennington, donating PPE, engaging in community um, engagement through several vehicles that are very, very successful. Um, and and, and let, me, let me note something. The research effort at Pennington, ag, and across our campus has been absolutely phenomenal. And, and that research effort has proved that our research is real. It is practical, um, and it is not only, only helping people, but it is literally saving lives. Uh, so hats off to the LSU research effort. Uh, LSU, E, A, and S are all online. They're donating PPE, and they're doing great things. Um, as we look forward, we are engaging in budget planning because we are planning in an environment of uncertainty. Uh, the state relies heavily on sales tax. Sales tax is significantly down. We rely heavily on tourism, as Steve Perry knows and, and informs us when we talk. Tourism is shut down. We rely heavily on oil and gas resources, and the price of oil and gas was below zero. We have asked our campuses to engage in two uh, planning endeavors to analyze what would we do if we had to reduce our state budgets by 5% and 10%. We hope for the best, but I promise that we will be prepared. We have received $27.1 million through the FIRST CARES Act funding. Half of that must go directly to students in, the ter in, in terms of student relief, and we are developing our plans across the whole LSU family uh, to make those distributions throughout the rest of this year. The other half is available for other COVID-related um, purposes and um, expenses. I would note, of that $27.1 million, none of it goes to research. Uh, research has not yet received any significant relief or support at the federal or the state level. And, and our units that do not have students, the Pennington Biomedical Research Center and the, and the LSU Ag Center, do not receive any of those 27.1 million, well, they do not receive any of the student-related funds. Um, so let me close with uh, what we are all about. We are all about our students. Of course, we're all about our research, and I mentioned that, but we're all about our students. We wouldn't be here without our students. And I have two very significant announcements to make about our very special students. We have two significant scholarship winners on the flagship. LSU Honors College student and stamp scholar Brianna Robertson from Slidell has been named a 2020 Barry M. Goldwater Scholar. She's a junior studying physics in the College of Science and computer engineering in the College of Engineering. She will receive a scholarship of up to $7,500 from the Barry Goldwater Scholarship Foundation to pursue undergraduate research in a STEM field. After graduation, she plans to pursue a PhD in electrical engineering and perform uh, mm -hmm. research and development in space related fields. Number two, Sarah Procopio of Baton Rouge is one of 62 Truman Scholars, 62, named in 2020. She's an Ogden Honors College student, a Louisiana Service and Leadership or LASAL program scholar studying political communication in the Manship School of MassCom. She plans to take a year off between her graduate and undergraduate programs to serve in the Louisiana Department of Health and then she hopes to pursue a master's of public policy with a concentration in social policy from the Gerald R. Ford School of Public Policy at the University of Michigan. Madam Chair, I would close by once again thanking all of my colleagues for the absolutely fantastic, selfless, around-the-clock work that they are doing to provide, to provide education, to provide research, and in the fight against COVID throughout the state. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President.
There are no reports to the board, so we will move to the next item. I will entertain one motion to approve all committee recommendations that were presented for board approval today. Armentor moves. Mr. Armentor moves. Is there a second? Okay. Madam Chair, I would like to just uh, recuse myself from that, that one item in the Property Facilities Committee uh, meeting. Other than that, I have no um, objections or to the approval. Thank you, Mr. Starnes. Dr. Shotland will second the motion. Second from Mr. Chatelaine. Is there any objection or any other comments? Without opposition, the committee reports are adopted, noting Mr. Starnes' recusal. Um, now it's time for the chair's report. And as always, Tom Galligan is a hard act to follow. And I want to thank him for his service during this time. Certainly when I and the board invited him to join us and serve as the interim president of LSU, none of us had any idea what lay ahead in the good times and in these very, very unprecedented difficult times. We've been reminded many, many times though that LSU has faced challenges in the time of the Spanish flu, in the time of the world wars when our students were called into service and the life of this university was interrupted. However, LSU has always recovered and come back stronger than ever. I know that LSU will do the same this time. I want to take a moment to thank the leadership of this state Governor John Bell Edwards and the Commissioner of Administration, Jay Darden and Ms. Barbara Goodson. They have been remarkable to work with, pushed us to lead, provided the resources we needed, given us the support and opened the doors to allow LSU to continue to work toward the resolution, solve the problems, dig into the research of this unknown virus. It was only a couple of months ago when we sat together, not knowing what lay ahead, but still basking in the glory of the national championship. We have seen many remarkable achievements by LSU Tigers. In the current time, people working from their garages, the staff that comes on this campus every day to help manufacture PPE, the untold hours of the doctors and nurses, the medical students, the lab techs in our hospitals and in hospitals across the state who all have worn the purple and gold. I want to say thank you to every one of them. We will continue to fight this battle and we will bring LSU back together on this campus in Baton Rouge and on every campus across the state. But know that our hearts go out to everyone who has suffered and all those who continue this fight. Tonight, I hope you will join me and all Tigers across the country and across the world who no doubt will join in front of their televisions to watch history be made by another LSU Tiger yet again. We come together to celebrate. We come together in times of strife and difficulty. We wish all the Tigers stepping out into a new world tonight in the NFL those who will be receiving their diplomas, but yet don't walk across the stage until later this summer or next fall. We wish all of them all the best. Thank you everyone for every contribution you have made. We will continue to fight this and LSU will once again be victorious and lead Louisiana to brighter days. That concludes my report. If there's no other business before this body, our next meeting is scheduled for May 22nd, 2020 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, so move. Second. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Is there a second? Armentor seconds. Thank you, Mr. Armentor. I look forward to you all joining me back in this chamber next month. God willing, stay safe. Thank you all and go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Pilots. Thank you. Thank you guys. Nice job. Great job. Thank you all.
Got it? Mary, Mary, Tom, thank you for your hard work. It's been great. Yeah, Tom, too. Thank you both, both, and all of our staff. We all join in that. Broke on the first day. Spectacular work. And uh, Jason, thanks for setting up the, our Zoom meeting. <laughs> Well, yeah, Jason, if you can help me figure it out, you're a genius. <laughs> James, I'm sorry for that snafu in the beginning. I will Great tell job, you, Tom. Thank you.